long of a video. Sorry, I've just got that come up on my screen. It's been recorded. Um, so, um, as I say, it's a lot's happened. Um, we never knew last year how long COVID were going to last and what effects it was going to have on us. And I'm sorry to say that the latest victim I know about is a very own Sam Morris. Uh, she's contracted COVID and won't be able to join us today. So I'm sure you'll all join with me in wishing Sam well and hope she'll be with, back with us soon. Uh, so without further pause now, I'm going to hand you over to Graham Brindley, who will be doing the uh, annual accounts. He's our treasurer. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, um, and good morning to everybody. Um, we always do this at the start of the meeting just to get it out of the way, and then you can enjoy the rest of uh, the AGM. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple of slides that I'm going to talk you through. The um, first one that you can see now in, on your screen is basically the income and expenditure uh, account for the year. Uh, don't worry about the terminology. Uh, just trust me, that that's what you're looking at. Um, the two columns to concentrate on are the two on the right-hand side, which relate to last year. That's headed up 2020. And the one that we're going to talk about now is 2021, which is the one just in from the, the right. Um, and the first thing really is to talk about income, um, where if you go down to the line just after note three, you'll see it says total. And there the income is shown as £406,808 for the year which um, is actually down on what it was last year. It's a reduction of nearly £50,000 down on last year's total, which was just over 456000 So that's been a significant reduction that we've had to contend with this year, along with the, obviously the COVID situation that Alan's just referred to. That main reduction of income uh, largely came from a reduction in our contract with the Blackburn with uh, Borough Council. Our, our, con our total contract income in the year was down just over 62,000 pounds. But we managed to make up some of that shortfall by uh, increases in grant income. Now grant income is uh, applications that we make during the year some we're very successful with, some we're not very successful with. So it's very difficult to plan at any point in time, you know. Um, but this year, we actually had uh, an increase. We, we, we got £153,000 this year in grant income, which was £32,000 upon last year. So that, that mitigated, to some extent, uh, the shortfall in our contract income. And then, of course, um, once we've actually... Uh, determine how much we've got. We've then got to look at our expenditure. Um, and we're always careful on costs, but obviously we're very, very careful on costs when our income goes down, as happened this year. And you can see their um, total income for the year was 391,200, sorry, total expenditure for the year was 391,247 which actually is a reduction of £40,000 on last year. So what we're saying is we've had a reduction in income, but we've also saved £40,000 of cost. Now, of that £40,000 of cost savings, most of it, um, about £25,000 of it, was actually a reduction in wages. And um, once again, I just on behalf of the trustees like to thank all our staff for their flexibility and continued dedication to the service to enable this to happen because um, we actually didn't furlough any of our staff during the COVID crisis, uh, as many organisations obviously did. Um, we hope that um, the staff have continued to deliver the best service that they possibly can to all the service users. Uh, and so I think the AGM is a very good time for the trustees just to thank them for doing that. 
Um, we also, because of the COVID crisis, we basically were working largely from home, again, as a lot of organisations were. So we weren't actually in the office, and that enabled us to make some savings on rates. And our rates costs were actually about £7,000 down on last year. So we've had a reduction in income, but we've had savings in cost. And so we've actually ended up with a surplus in the year of about fifteen and a half thousand pounds. You can figure, you can see a figure there in the accounts. It's described as the net movement in funds. What that means is it's a surplus in the year of fifteen thousand five hundred and sixty-one. So although it's down on last year's figure of twenty-four thousand seven hundred, um, we've still made a surplus, which is good news. Um, Alan or whoever's controlling, can we go to page sixteen, yeah. please? Now, sorry. Thanks, Alan. Um, now, this is the balance sheet. Um, and again, if you go to the two right-hand columns, 2020 last year, 2021 this year, and what a balance sheet does, it tells you what the organisation owns and also um, what it owes to people. Uh, and really, the two things on this document that we just need to pay attention to are the amount of money that we've got cash in the bank, and you can see there, that's a very healthy 240,000 um, pounds. And also at the bottom of the document, it will tell you the reserves um, and that's 242,000. The reserves figure means basically the, the net assets of the organization. In other words, if we take all the things that we owe, own rather, and deduct all the things that the amounts that we owe, the rest is owned by the organization, that's £242,000. That's good news, uh, and I'll come back to that a little bit later. The reserves, um, the, some of them are, are restricted, as you can see there, 16000 That means that they are specifically given to the organization for, for a particular purpose. So we don't actually have the, the, any discretion as to how those funds are used. But when it comes to the remainder, the trustees have discretion on how those funds should be used. And um, with good guidance and good gov governance, we, we have a, an amount that we keep in reserve for basically a catastrophic loss of income. So if something disastrous happened, one of our major, major fund providers for some reason suddenly said, we can't give you any more money. We would still have some funds in reserve to carry on the organization until we could find a contingency plan. Um, really that's, that's it in terms of the, the, the accounts, um, but just a few words for the future, because I think we all know in our own way, just how tough it's been for everybody over the last 12 months. Um, and it continues to be a very tough environment for charities generally. Um, local councils, uh, local businesses, everybody is recovering from this pandemic. So uh, fund provision is not easy. We're currently awaiting um, the outcome uh, for a lottery bid. Now, the lottery have been funding us for the last five years. But I think it's true to say that at best we can hope for is that we'll get an award for not five years, but for three years. But it's unlikely that it will be at the level of funding that we've had in the past. Uh, and of course, who knows what will happen politically with, with council funding. So um, against this background, really, it, the organisation really is, is looking now at uh, income generation opportunities and fundraising. Um, and the trustees continually uh, will support the organization by allocating wherever is necessary some of those uh, reserves that I've just mentioned that are in the balance sheet to make sure that the organization can continue to offer the service users the services that we've we've all enjoyed in the past so I suppose the message is that despite it's a the very challenging environment that we're in we are a very resourceful organization and we are very, very confident that we can cope with the situation uh, for the future. Um, so that's it, Alan, thank you very much. Unless there's any, any questions that anybody would like to fire at me, that's, uh, that's basically my report. 
Right. Thank. Thanks very much, uh, Graham, um, for that. I'm going to move on now to the minutes of last year's annual general meeting, which I'll bring up on the screen. Hopefully, it's come up now. Yeah. So I'll just give you one or two seconds to glance through it. Um, there's, there's more or less um, what's happening today. It was the same last year. Um, we've done the introduction, the Graham's on the annual accounts. Um, now, I'll be taking the part of Sam this year, unfortunately, as I said, because she can't be with us. So these are the minutes of last year's meeting. Um, where we've raised funds, um, reflection on a crystal celebration, and Richard, who presented at the last one with his work, uh, walking for curers, where he did the long walk along the English Welsh border, uh, and uh, Sarah did the skydive, uh, which was quite an event. Um, we did raise some funds through the curers' dream draw, but again, that's something that we want to really promote and get people to join and do as much as we can. It benefits in two ways because not only does the charity uh, get some of the funding, but we also give some back to the people that are put in, in the lottery. So you, you have a chance of winning. Uh, lasting power of attorney, it's been difficult. Um, it was good last year because we could still get to each other for most of the year, but this year, obviously, we're we're struggling with that, but they are doing it virtually online as, as best we can. And um, so that's that's been good. I think uh, Janet's once again leading the team on that. So very uh, grateful to Janet. We had two uh, emotional stories from Curers, uh, and then we looked at how the volunteering had gone in the previous year. So those were the minutes of the last uh, AGM, could I ask if anyone will propose them as correct? Somebody can just put their eye, you can put your hand up and just that you, that they, you think they're correct. Or if you have any objections, just pop it in the chat box. So I'm going to take it that you're accepting the minutes as a correct record. Thank you very much. Right, so the next thing um, I've got to do is look at the um, trustees. Um, as you can see, this is a, from the annual report, which you'll be able to download on the website later today. Um, so as you can see, um, we've again one new trustee, Mark, but uh, sadly, uh, Rosalind, uh, Ros Nuttall, as everybody knew her, uh, passed away. Uh, and we were sorry to lose her because she was a quite a good uh, member of the team. Uh, David Radley, unfortunately, um, will be standing down this time. So at the moment, um, the trustees that are standing again are myself, Helen Pickup, Graham Brindley is the treasurer. David Bradley, as I say, is stepping down, uh, is retiring. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank David for all the work, sterling work he's done on this organisation. I think he was one of the original trustees, uh, along with Nan. And, uh, you know, they've really done, he's done an excellent service for us. So we hope he enjoys his retirement. But I think we'll still see him popping into the centre every now and then. Uh, James is again willing to stand and Nan is, and as I said, Mark, our newest trustee. Can I ask that you all are agreeable to those people being elected as trustees? Or if you have any objections, please pop it in the chat. So I'm going to take it that we're all standing once again for the organization. Thank you very much for that. Uh, what have I got left to do now? Um, yeah, I've mentioned the, the annual report, so I'm going to move on now to a video uh, identifying 
young Kerr is. If you'll just bear with me one second while I switch the screens over. Can I just introduce it, actually, Alan, while we... Um, yes, go on. Yeah, go on. Yeah. So, yeah, certainly. part of the, this week, as many of you might know, it's Carers Week. And the theme this week, this uh, year, is making carers visible and valued. And we've really tried to help make carers more visible by um, producing videos that we're putting on our social media um, channels and websites. And this is the world premiere of this latest video that we've um, that we've produced. So I don't think uh, most of the staff have seen this yet. And um, so we welcome any feedback or comments in the in the chat box as well. What, we'd like to know what you think about this. I'll help you cook and clean. I'll help you dress and wash your hair. I do it for my grandma. I do it because I care. I'll take you to appointments when your illness doesn't seem fair. I do it for my husband. I do it because I care. I'll hold your hand through the symptoms and side effects. I'll treasure the moments that we share. I do it for my daughter. I do it because I care. And even when times get hard, just know I'll always be prepared. I do it for my neighbour. I do it because I care. When you wish that you just felt well, I know my struggles don't compare. I do it for my uncle. I do it because I care. So um, what you saw there was um, a film that I think we made about two weekends ago um, and a professional film company donated um, some of the time to help us make that. And they were actually some of our real carers and service users and cared for. Um, so I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed that. And I really encourage you to share it on social media for us because we want to get that as wide as possible. Um, so I think it's over to me to do the um, the update. So over the past year, um, I know that Sam really wanted to do this bit as well because um, she, she particularly enjoys reporting on the good work we've done. So, uh, But over the past year, um, we've tried really hard to overcome some of the challenges that the pandemic has thrown up. And... Um, some of the things that we've done, we've had to tweak a little bit, but we've been really proud that we can continue our offer. So some of the things that we've um, done um, to change the face-to-face -face provision is um, we switched to telephone counselling and appointments with uh, assessments of the phone. And we found really creative ways to fill in benefit forms for people um, of the phone. Uh, we increased the numbers of welfare checks that we did. So as a team, we sat down and we thought about anyone that was vulnerable or that could be particularly isolated. And we ramped up the, uh, the welfare checks to those people. Um, at the beginning of lockdown, it was apparent that, you know, with the situation with the supermarket queues, that some people really needed to be in out of supermarket as fast as they could because someone vulnerable was waiting at home. And um, so we started to do the identification letters that carers could take to supermarkets um, to hopefully help them out in that way as well. Um, the government um, around about the start of the pandemic were recommending that every carer had an emergency plan. 
So we we reiterate in our uh, emergency planning service. It's something that we've always done, but we were particularly keen for take up of that to increase. Uh, we moved our activities, workshops and courses um, over to Zoom. And Coulson did a fabulous job at making sure that um, those were really accessible and, and enjoyable. Um, we offered befriending phone calls to any carers, um, again, that were isolated and wanted a regular friendly chat. And uh, we're really proud that that's uh, the befriending phone calls, uh, the take up was really good. And um, we changed some of the work that we did with the yaks, it, uh, the young adult carers. So it became quite apparent earlier on during lockdown that a lot of their um, concerns were around exams and the courses and whether they'd be back in uni before you know they, they finish the course. So the emphasis with that changed as well. Um, we increased the number of drop-ins that we, we made available to the young adult carers. Um, we were really lucky because we got some funding um, from the rank organisation and this enabled us to get some really good um, stuff out to carers. So that's including things like um, supermarket vouchers, um, for carers that were really financially hit. Um, we distributed pen pal packs and that was an attempt to get carers that were never going to be digitally engaged. You know, we did a good job at getting some carers on onto Zoom and, and engaging with us in that way, but not every carer had access to IT or wanted it. So we found there were particularly some cohorts just said, you know, there's no point trying to get me on, on Zoom on an iPad. I, I, I don't want to do it. So we reached out to those people and we made pen pal packs available um, so that they could hopefully start up a, a correspondence with, with maybe old friends or family that they're not able to see. Um, for the carers that did want to engage digitally but didn't have the means, we gave out um, tablets and um, mobile phones and also access to Wi-Fi and uh, also some afternoon tea um, packs were available which our volunteers delivered and I know it really brightened some people's day and we got some fabulous photos of people uh, enjoying the, the treats. Um, we also did some other things that weren't funded through the rank funding. So that included giving out some activity packs. So I know at the beginning of lockdown, um, some um, parent carers are saying that they really appreciated that. It enabled them to do things with the children and to occupy them. Uh, we gave out packs of forget-me-not seeds in the hope that um, carers wouldn't forget us, but also that they had the chance to, to do some planting and growing and, and hopefully enjoy that great weather that we had last year and, and get the seeds planted. Um, we had some um, hygiene packs um, that we delivered out to um, some of the, the younger um, girls that, that we were giving out in pamper packs. And uh, we also had some PPE that we were able to distribute. Um, we had food deliveries as well um, that was part of um, a wider interagency effort and some carers got some um, meals delivered, which again, the volunteers were brilliant at stepping in with that. And um, we were very creative with how we used our activities and we actually made some tickets available for families to go to Nosley Safari Park because we thought this is a really good way to enjoy a day out with your family. You're in your car, you're contained, you know, you're not having to... Uh, to, you can still isolate within your car basically and so some families got to go and still enjoy um, that family time together so we we're really proud of of some of the uh, some of the things that we did a little bit differently over the year and um, we also obviously our staff were working really hard they were dealing with a lot of people who um, were in distress really because of the situation the pandemic brought around and we put a bit of extra effort in as well to making the staff um, felt supported whilst we're working from home. Um, and I just want to take the opportunity to thank them all because they're all absolutely marvellous. A lot of them had their own situations with the families and their own struggles um, at seeing their loved ones and um, juggling their own caring roles. And they did a great job despite all of this. So I'm really proud to say that over the past year, um, I think we've done an absolutely Trojan job at keeping everything going, at doing a really, really uh, lovely service to carers. We've got some excellent feedback 
and I think we've responded um, really well. I think some of the um, stuff that we did is in the annual report. Um, so I think Alan's going to send that out afterwards and we'll, um, we'll yeah, give you the chance to look at that. Um, one of the things that we've done as a service is tried to increase the, uh, as I said earlier, the visibility in the videos that we've done. And we put together a service video um, about what we offer. And some of the uh, members of staff that we have have uh, contributed to that. So I'd like um, Alan to show you the staff video if you, if you can. Just, excuse me, do you want to just mention about the 2021 challenge, Claire? Yeah, that screen. was going to come later with the website. And oh, was it? Yeah, that's all right. Oh. <laughs> Don't throw me off right. course. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll, I'll play the video then, bear with me a second. Here at Blackburn with Darwin Carer Service, we are so, so proud of what we offer to carers. And most of those services are free of charge. And we deliver in English, Urdu, Punjabi and Gujarati. And uh, here's a little reminder of what else we do. We have experienced advisors that give one-to-one -one support, information and guidance. And this is so that you and the person you care for have everything you need to stay as well and as happy as possible. We provide benefits advice, benefit checks, support with benefits applications, which includes form filling. We've got support for 18 to 25 year olds to make sure that their caring role doesn't impact on their employment, their education or time to be with their friends. We have support for anybody who is concerned about a loved one who is drinking alcohol or using drugs. We can give you one-to-one -one support and advice and information. We have support groups and courses too. We have power of attorney form filling service open to anyone. You don't have to be registered with us. We can help you put important legal documents in place. We have an emergency planning service to help you work out plan B. If you were ever unwell, and unable to do the things that you usually do for your loved one. We've got volunteering opportunities. You can get involved in projects that interest you at times to suit you. We have so many fun and interesting activities, workshops, support groups, all designed to give you some fun, learn something new and enjoy yourself, give you some support. There's counselling available to give you a chance to explore your feelings in a safe and confidential space. We have befriending for anybody who would like a regular friendly chat. So now you've heard about some of the stuff that we offer at the service, it's up to you um, to take as much. Here at Blackburn with Dar give you some support. There's counselling available to give you a chance to explore your feelings in a safe and confidential space. We have befriending for anybody who would like a regular friendly chat. So now you've heard about some of the stuff that we offer at the service, it's up to you um, to take as much or as little as you need. So to set any of this stuff up, um, get in contact with us. So you can do this either by phoning us on 01254 or you could visit our website, which is um, bwdcarers.org.uk or take a look at our social media channels and we hope that we can um, speak to you soon. So I think, um, yeah, that was our, again, a sneak preview of our service offer. And I know that we sort of have to drag some um, of the team kicking and screaming in to do these videos. So I really want to thank them for, uh, for still being good sports and becoming involved. Um, one of the things that we did during, um, during the uh, last year was to set up a writing group 
Um, so again, Coulson did this, she put this on in response to um, some requests from carers, but also because it was an activity um, that people could enjoy um, in their own homes. Um, it's something that lent itself to, to being able to do over Zoom as well. And uh, one of our carers showed a real flair for poetry. And we've um, had permission to share two of the poems that we particularly enjoyed. And I believe we've got two members of staff um, that are gonna read out um, those poems now. So I think the first one up, is it, um, is it Yasmin? Yes, it's me. Good morning, everyone. Let's hope I do justice reading this poem. My wife has had a stroke. My mother is not well. My sister's had an op. Our lives have turned to hell. But then one day I joined Coulson's merry band, people she has gathered from every single land. Now I'm Zooming every day, chatting here and there, touching base with some others, with others who do care. Connecting with each other, recalling bygone years of picnics in the park before illness, before tears. Thanks. Thank you, Yasmin. And so I think that was a really good uh, way of capturing um, some of the feelings that carers have. And um, this next one, we, we loved it, really made us chuckle. And um, we just loved how upbeat it was. And Sonia's um, going to read this one out. Again, you need to unmute yourself, Sonia. Sorry. Underskirts and frilly things and lacy hems galore. You wondered what had hit you when I knocked at your door. I wiggled and I waggled. I tottered down your way. You said my heels were fine and I was welcome to stay. I sashayed and I sauntered right along your street. You told me I was welcome. You were very glad to meet. I'm a man in a skirt, a man with hairy arms. But even so, you welcome me with your open arms. So softly spoken wishes for your AGM. Pink and painted lips say thank you once again. Thank you, Sonia. Um, again, if you uh, enjoyed any of the poems or anything, please put your comments in uh, the box. I'm sure that um, our carer that wrote those would love to, to hear from them. And um, one of the things that Sam was really keen to do was to have a theme show, um, like a quiz show theme this year. And um, unfortunately, because she is poorly, um, she's not been able to to put that together. So we've put together a really quick, um, is it play your cards right when you go higher or lower? So we've based um, a higher or lower game um, on some of the stats that we have from last year. So we want some audience participation from this. So if your device will let you use the chat bar, um, if you can, uh, if, if you don't know how to use it, maybe, uh, try and direct you. So in the bottom of the, uh, I'm on a laptop, so it's easy for me to tell you, but in the bottom of the bar, there's a, there's a chat facility. And sometimes it'll let you do reactions or it'll let you type something in. So if you are able to join in, please do. So what I'm gonna do is give you a statistic and I want you to say whether you think the next figure is gonna be higher or lower. And so, the first number we have is the number of new referrals that we got in the last year. So that was um, April 2020 to, um, to March 2021. I'm using my son's uh, magnetic board for this. <laughs> this is all, all mod cons. So the number of new referrals we got in that past year was 450. So the next question is, how many new assessments did we do over that past year? Do you think that figure is higher or lower? 
So you've got 10 seconds to get your answers in the chat bar. I think Isma had some music as well, some uh, suspense, suspenseful music. Okay, so Isma, what, what was the uh, overwhelming um, answer there, do you think? One second. So it's looking higher, isn't it? We've got a lot, a, a lot of um, highers, a few lower. Higher. We've got a lot yeah. of highers. We, we're going to go with higher there. So the actual number of assessments was, oh, we got that, 688. So it was higher. The reason it's higher than the number of referrals is because some carers, the change, something happens in the changing role or they take on another caring role for someone else as well and they request another assessment. So that includes all the um, people that came back for some more support and help and assessment. So the figure of 688, how many benefits appointments do you think we gave in the past year? Going to go higher or lower than 688? I think your countdown starts now. <laughs> Okay, Isma, what's coming in? What do you think, sir? Right, I'm, I'm seeing quite a few lowers um, there. Yeah, we've got a mixture. Yeah, someone's saying higher because of the pandemic. Someone else is saying higher. Okay, the number of benefits appointments that we actually gave out were 530. So even though there was, there's a really high demand for the benefits service, um, but we've only got a limited number of hours in which we can give those. So we'd love to be able to increase that capacity because the demand is there. Um, but we still managed to help 530 people there with benefits appointments. So again, I think that's, I think that's really good. So 530. How many carers do you think um, came for emergency plans? Is it higher or lower than 530? Just to put it in a bit of context, we've got over 6,500 carers registered with us. So if you think about the number on the database, how many do you think came for emergency plans, higher or lower? And I think your time starts now. <laughs> Right, Isma, what are we, what do you think the overall feeling is there? Higher. Higher, okay. So it's actually much lower. It was only 74. Um, it's something that we really want to increase in the service. So um, the government at the time were, re were recommending that all carers had an emergency plan. Obviously, if someone needs to self-isolate and they've got an intensive caring role, we don't want to be leaving people in the lurch. So uh, we did do a big push. We got 74, but we really want to get that number up. So we're asking for everyone's help to, um, to raise awareness that we do do that emergency planning. It's completely free. We can either give people the forms or help them fill in them in themselves and help them brainstorm their own forms. So hopefully next year we'll get that figure up with your help. So 74. So this next one might be a little bit easy. So how many support group attendees do you think we had over the past year? So that's everybody that's joining in with all the, um, the support groups that we offered over Zoom. Okay, your time starts now. <laughs> Great. 
Yeah, that's uh, it's much higher. So we actually had a thousand and ninety nine, which I think is actually an amazing figure to say that uh, we were working remotely. All those people were having to access um, the offer on Zoom. So I'm really, really proud of that. Um, I don't know about you, but I think that's phenomenal under the circumstances. So next question. How many welfare calls did we make over the past year? You'll be pleased to know there's only two questions left as well, so I'm not going to prolong this too long. Um, but how many welfare calls do you think we made over the past year? Is it higher or lower than 1,099? <laughs> Okay, a lot of people thinking there, so we've got a mixture. Okay. I think most people there are saying higher, and if you did say higher, you're right. We got 2,735 welfare calls. Um, again, I think that's absolutely phenomenal um, when you consider that staff had uh, the normal day jobs to do as well as fitting in all the welfare calls um, and checks to people. Um, I'm really, really proud of that figure. I think we had a bit of help with some of the volunteers there with that as well. And we also got two social work students um, for a period that helped out. But again, I'm, I think that's really good. And finally, the last question, how many volunteer hours did volunteers give to the service over the past year? So higher or lower than that? That's quite a big figure. <laughs> I think uh, Stuart's after a speedboat there. You've come on the wrong quiz show if uh, you're after a speedboat, Stuart. Um, most people are saying higher. And if you did say hi, yeah, you're right. So we got a whopping 2,965 volunteer hours last year. Um, so all the things that we did to deliver, um, so we had all those uh, meals, pamper packs, um, things like that. We had the counsellors that gave the time. Um, there was just and the befriending phone calls that we did. I just think that's an absolutely amazing figure. And in total, that amounts to £32,615 um, that they, they contributed to the service. So I think that's absolutely amazing. And um, we had volunteer week last week and a couple of our volunteers um, said that they'd like to um, put some videos together to show how they've contributed to the service. So um, because they do play a massive role in the service and they do a brilliant job, we wanted to show you a couple of their... Um, videos. So I think Alan's got those lined up for us, hopefully. Hi, my name's Claire and I'm one of the volunteer counsellors with Blackburn with Darwin Carers Service. Um, I've been volunteering since around November last year um, and I began volunteering not that long after I'd qualified as a psychotherapist. So I was looking to gain my experience, particularly working with short term counselling clients. Um, and that's, of course, what the carer's service offers in terms of counselling. So um, carers can have up to eight sessions of counselling. Um, I've really enjoyed working with the carers. Um, I was drawn to working volunteering with carers simply because I'd previously worked for another carers centre in the role of a, an advisor so I had some understanding of unpaid carers. Um, all my work or volunteering with the carers service is remote at the minute of course so it's either been online or over the telephone and I've really enjoyed working with the carers that I've had um, the pleasure of working with. Uh, just getting to know them over those eight sessions and seeing how they can grow and journey in those eight sessions. Uh, it's likely that when uh, we return face to face, I'll carry on volunteering with the carer service, but I'll continue doing so remotely simply because my um, work situation has changed quite a bit since I began volunteering. Um, and I would say that I probably give about 
three to five hours a week in terms of my time to the carer's service. So that usually includes um, working with up to three clients a week, so three hour sessions, and then there's all the admin, obviously, that the paperwork um, just resulting from that and making contact with carers sometimes just to book in initial appointments. So it's great to be part of the team. Um, hopefully I will get to meet some of you face to face one day, um, but until then, keep up the good work. So that was Claire, one of our volunteer counsellors, and uh, we've got um, another video that was made by three of our um, volunteers. Isma's going to be sharing that one, Claire. Okay. Um, you're on mute, Claire. Claire, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, now, yeah. Sorry. Um, hopefully that showed how enthusiastic some of our carers are. Um, we've got some, um, we've got a carer coming on to share a story. But can we, Alan, can we show the young adult carers video first, just while she's um, joining the chat? Um, so we um, put together a video to highlight um, some of the issues that young adult carers face. And we're really hoping that we can share this far and wide um, and hopefully show it in screens around um, the borough. So this is a joint project that we did with Child Action Northwest. And um, again, this is, this is, I think we've already actually had a little sneak premiere. So this is, um, this is the second showing of it. Um, again, this is going to be going on our social media channel. I'm not a carer. I just help out after school with my little brother because my mum's poorly. I'm not a carer. I just spend a lot of free time helping out around the house. I'm not a carer. I just do the cooking and cleaning for my grandma. I'm not a carer. I just had to drop out of college to help around the house. I am not a carer. I just help to care for my aunties who have learning disabilities. I'm not a carer. I'm just alone a lot of the time. I don't really get the chance to see my friends anymore because um, I'm always needed around the house. I can't get a part-time job or anything because <laughs> I don't have the time. I didn't get a chance to go to college or uni. And I do worry a lot about my future. I'm lonely, isolated. I don't realise that I need support, but I'm not a carer. Mama? So 
So I'm sure you'll agree that that's another really powerful uh, video. And we really want to, um, ourselves and Child Action Northwest, we really want to raise the um, increase the number of referrals. We get to the Young Adult Carers Projects um, because we know that they're more vulnerable to uh, dropping out of education because of the caring roles or not engaging in training or putting their own lives on hold, really. So we really want everybody's help to, um, to increase the referral numbers there. And we're happy to share that video. Um, and, and really, we want it to go viral. We want, we want people to, to come forward and register. Um, so again, um, if you can like, um, I think Isma put in the chat, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, you'll be able to see all these videos on there and hopefully share the links and, and share the stuff that we're putting on social media. Um, I think as well, have we got Carol on the line now? Awesome. All right. So Carol is one of our carers and she's, um, she's agreed to come and share her story with us. And I always think this is the best part of of the AGM because we can talk all day about, about who we are and what we do, but I think it, it's always more powerful when it comes from the carers themselves. So I'd like to hand over to Carol and she'll um, say a few words. Hi everyone, I'm Carol and I'd like to take, talk to you for a few minutes about my life as a carer and the support I've received for the past eight years from Blackburn with Doe and Carers Service. For some carers, their caring responsibilities may increase gradually, but in my case, I was plunged overnight into caring. My husband, Roy, who's now aged 81, had a severe stroke and was in hospital for many weeks. As you can imagine, his homecoming was a difficult and demanding time for us all, both physically and emotionally. Whilst other agencies supported Roy at this time, Sonia C. Stevens of the Carers Service visited each week for the first few weeks to support me. Roy has been left with no use in his right arm and can only walk around the downstairs of our house using a quad stick. Outside, he uses a manual wheelchair. My caring responsibilities and not being able to leave my husband for much longer than an hour at a time has meant it has been difficult to access some of the uh, activities provided by the carer's service in the past, apart from the enjoyable occasional pampering session. I was, however, very thankful to be able to access counselling through the carer's service when our family experienced grief and heartbreak after the sudden unexplained death in her sleep of our young granddaughter. I have always remained grateful for the support, knowledge and expertise of individual carers, advisors, other staff and the volunteers. The past 15 months since the advent of COVID have been very challenging for us as for other families. Up to March 2020, Roy had been going to daycare each week so I could have a few hours to myself. Daycare was then suspended for many months and has only recently restarted for him. Agency carers had been coming in to get Roy up and put him to bed but I suspended these and placed us in voluntary isolation for many months whilst I provided all Roy's personal care. Then in October, I had the misfortune to contact, contract COVID myself. My thanks are due to social services staff at this time who proved their worth during the crisis and organized carers for Roy until I began to feel better. In December, everything was getting back to our normal until Roy fell heavily short before Christmas and was hospitalised for three weeks over Christmas and New Year. A few days following his hospital admission, there was talk of sending him home, even though he couldn't walk. I rang the carer's service and was advised to ask for a full 
hospital social care assessment before he was discharged. Subsequently, he was moved to Clitheroe Hospital and not discharged until he could walk. The past year or so has had its compensations for me. The ways in which the care of service staff have adapted to the various lockdowns and restrictions have meant that I have been able to attend meetings via Zoom. That is, once I'd managed to get it installed and functional, thanks to the advice of a member of the carer's office staff. These online meetings have had the benefits of diverting my thought patterns from the anxiety of caring towards doing something that I enjoy, that's for me as an individual. Meetings have included writing group sessions, play reading, and one on power of attorney advice. I have also had the unexpected treats of afternoon tea and a pack of artist material delivered my, to my door. I'm aware that as a voluntary organization, the carer's service may face funding and staffing challenges in the future in order to maintain the services being currently offered. In the weeks and months ahead, I will face my own very real challenges as a carer, but I'll do so in the knowledge that help, support and advice is always available. A big thank you goes to Blackburn with Darwin Carer Service from me and my family. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Carol. Can we can we unmute and, and give um, Carol a, a round of applause? Because I think it's really brave to tell your story and share, and it was beautifully done. Just wish you and Roy all the best over the uh, over the the coming months, Carol, and and keep using the service. And if there's anything we can do to help, you know where we are. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, the next bit that we wanted to just highlight was our new um, website. So our website that we um, commissioned has gone live this week. So again, this is. Um, this is quite a new thing for us, a new development. And what we wanted to do is just, um, I suppose, strip it right back, make the information on there easier to find, um, a little bit more succinct, and uh, really highlight the, um, the fact that it could be a lot easier to get in contact with us. So you'll see uh, referral forms on there and contact forms, things like that. So what I want to do is just give you, hopefully I can share my screen, and just give you a little sneaky peek at, um, at what we've what we've got now. So, are you able to see that? Is that is that can 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 you give yeah, me? Yeah, we can yeah, see that. Up. Yeah. Okay, sorry, because I can't see you anymore. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is the um the home screen. And uh, one of the things that we've tried to make really prominent, there's a contact us box there um, where someone can contact us quickly and, and get um, a live chat and some help. Um, so as long as it's, it's manned, we've got that. And if not, we can get back to you by email straight away. Um, we've also got our online referral form. So this is really good for if um, somebody was a carer, they knew that they um, were a carer themselves and they wanted to refer themselves, they can do that there. And there's also a bit for if you're a professional and you can prefer, you can refer that way. So hopefully we've just made that bit a lot easier um, to get in touch with us. Um, we've got information about how we can help you. So we've got a breakdown of a lot of our um, services like uh, the emergency planning, the counseling, um, you know, the power of attorney thing. Um, we've got plenty of um, our online offers, uh, information about our online offer on there. Um, another thing that we wanted to um, get on was our groups, because we've got quite a wide range of groups at the service. 
and we wanted to give you a little bit of information about those. Uh, usually, when we're in Kingsway, we'd we'd have the location and the times because they're on Zoom. Um, sometimes are changeable, so we're just asking people to um, to get in contact with us if they want to access any of those. Um, but there's loads and loads of groups there, and there's um, you know there's some sewing groups, craft groups, walking groups, some some really fun uh, things that we have. Um, I mentioned that we have our list of services um, before, um, so I'd really encourage you to to log on and have a look at. Um, at the that's a quite a succinct list that we've got and then we have some more detailed pages here so there's information there about the um drug and alcohol support for family members and some frequent frequently asked questions there and um, that we, we you know we regularly hear i think people forget that we do that family support piece for anyone that's worried about someone that's drinking or, or using drugs. So I want to sort of highlight that as well, that we, you know, we'd love your referrals from there as well. Um, we've also got information on the young adult carers and we'll be getting our video on there soon. Um, so please come and have a look. Uh, one of the things that we've made it really easy to do this time is donate. So we've put a big donate button on there um, as, as Carol and um, Graham and, and uh, Alan have said that funding is, um, it's, it's getting tight and we want to be able to um, generate our own revenues, our own income really. Um, so by donating and getting involved with other ways to support us, um, you'd be really helping the service out. So we've got fundraising opportunities, there's volunteer opportunities. Uh, we've also got the dream draw, which again, Alan mentioned earlier. And if there's one thing that you can take away from today, it would be amazing to log on to bwdcarers.org.uk and um, enter our dream draw. So we've tried to make it as easy as possible for you. There's a form there um, to sign up. And uh, we've not asked for any bank details in there. So don't worry, it's really secure and um, we'll get in touch with you. So what that is, it's a pound a month to play. And um, everybody that's um, contributed, 50% of the income goes out as winnings. So it's a really good way to support the service, but also be in with a chance of winning something as well. So um, that's something that, um, that you could maybe do today afterwards if you've been inspired to, to help us. Another thing that we wanted to um, draw, oops, draw your attention to, I'll stop sharing, um, is our 2021 challenge. So we set up a, a challenge at the beginning of the year, um, partly just to try and get people to um, to move more and to help their own well-being in that way, and um, but also to, to help raise awareness of the service and also hopefully get some funding together. Uh, we set up the 20, 2021 challenge. So that is to try and cover 2,021 miles um, in 2021. So we're doing it as a staff team and we really want to raise 2,021 pounds so if anyone's motivated to to maybe now the weather's a little bit better to do some walking and be able to um to get out and about a bit more you don't have to do any um crazy walks it, it you know even walking the dog it all it all contributes to to doing this it doesn't have to be walking either so however you want to cover it if you want to swim it if you're particularly athletic and you've got a relay team um you can um, get involved. So again, we've been posting that on social media and if you can raise awareness of it, um, we'd really, really appreciate that. Um, I've seen uh, something in the chat there from Sue about is there um, an app? I believe that there's a way of making your um, your phone um, look like the, the websites and apps. So what I'm gonna do is I'll find out how we can do that and we'll, we'll show. My, um, I know someone that showed me how to do it and I've forgotten, but there is a way of, of getting it on your phone as an app. Um, so please, I just, I just want to leave you with a final thought to, um, you know, consider um, fundraising or, um, you know, joining the dream draw. And just thank you for all your support and for sharing uh, any videos that we put out, any social media posts. If you can follow us on YouTube, 
that'd be great as well because when we get to um, over 100 followers um, we, we get a bit more freedoms with our YouTube channels so please just like and follow and even if you don't check it regularly you're still helping us there and um, I want to hand over to uh, Riz because Riz Warner is going to do um, the vote of thanks, I believe. So thanks for, for uh, sticking with that and listening to my voice all this time. Thank can you, I, I, zoom, I was just you going to jump go in for Claire there. Yeah, I was going to say, with the Curry Stream draw, we, we only need 1,000 tickets, which when you consider the population of Blackburn is on, over 150,000, Blackburn with Darwin. I should say, mention Darwin because I am a Darwin in myself. Um, we'll be able to up the prices to £500 a month. So, you know, more we get, the more we pay out. So please support that Curry's Dream Draw. Um, so I'll, I'll hand you over to Riz. We, we seem to be rushed, going through it quite a pace uh, this, uh, this morning. We're well ahead of time. So I'm going to take the opportunity to thank the staff, um, for the really hard work they've done in difficult circumstances. Um, they've rallied round this morning when we unfortunately found out Sam wasn't well enough to join us. Um, we were meeting at eight o'clock this morning and talking to each other, planning the day out. Um, Claire's really stepped up to the mark in presenting. Uh, it's not one of my strong points. Uh, I'm, I'm a plain talker rather than uh, presenter and that so uh, I'd like to thank Claire for taking over uh, Sam's role in presenting. Sam's normally very good at this uh, and we've got a real asset in there. Just to mention as well why I'm involved with the Curry's service. We've heard, heard some very touching stories from Curry's. I came to the Curry's service I think it was about 2015 uh, by chance, I got an email, because my son has learning disabilities, I got an email inviting me to a, a learning disability carers group uh, that was held at Kingsway. And I came down, I was in a time of my life then where I was very depressed because, as I say, I have a son who has learning disabilities and I was his main carer. Uh, my brother was going through the final stages of terminal cancer and I was supporting him uh, through that uh, because his wife and sons were all working and at the same time we had my father-in-law living with us who had dementia so I was his carer as well so I had three caring roles and I just totally lost my own identity I didn't know who I was or why I was here you know but when I came to the carer's service it was Karen then who was, well, Yasmin was running the LD Curry's group and Karen, she mentioned things to Karen and then Karen came and said, can you do this for us? And once I'd said yes, that was it. I was hooked. You, couldn't, <laughs> you can't get away once you said yes to Karen. So, but not only have I been able to give back to the Curry's service, they've given so much to me. So I'd like to thank all the staff they work hard. Uh, the trustees are a brilliant group. Um, we meet uh, quarterly and or even more often to look at ways of improving the service, how we can cope with the cuts in funding. So, as I say, thanks to everybody and a big thank you to all the couriers that have joined us today and all the people that are supporting us. Thanks very much. Right, Riz. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Thank you for attending our AGM today. Uh, on behalf of the Carers Service, I would like to thank our funders. Um, I'd like to thank our trustees. <clears throat> thank you so much, Alan, for everything you do, um, especially from me and Claire. Whenever we have a problem with our database. Alan is our go-to person. We we ring Alan and say help. So thank you very much, Alan, for all the um, work that you do for us and with us. Um, I'd like to say a massive thank you to our leader, Sam, who can't be here today. She is 
absolutely gutted that she can't be here. Um, she's a wonderful leader and without her, we wouldn't be able to do the work that we do. So thank you, Sam. All the staff that work tirelessly and who have done an amazing job this year. Thank you so much from the bottom of the management's hearts. Honestly, you guys do a great job in all your roles. Thank you so much. Um, our volunteers who give up their hours, um, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do the work we do. So thank you very much um, to all our volunteers. And lastly, thank you so much to our carers who allow us to support um, you guys in caring for your loved ones. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Um, if you want to leave your feedback in the chat box, Isma will pick it up. Um, any comments about the service, any comments about the AGM today? Thank you, everyone. I'll just play the introduction video for a few seconds, then you have time to log on to the uh, chat box whilst it's playing. Thank you everyone for your attendance. I am going to officially close the AGM now at 11.47. Thanks everyone for attending. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you bye. so much. Bye now. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye. 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 bye.